I'm Doug Berry, and I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm not a member of Prince of Peace Parish. <laughs> and, uh, the only prison situations were because Tim got me in trouble. That's why he had to bail me out. No, I've um, uh, been traveling for about 22, 23 years now. Um, many conferences over the years with Father Casey and Tim, and this is always an honor to come together and be part of a conference in general. Uh, especially for Catholic speakers, because we're hanging out with each other. We see each other periodically around the country, and then you talk to each other now and then. I remember Father Casey said something a while back. We were in Texas again. It was like 10, 15 years ago, a Full Muscle Truth Conference. And you said, um, Doug, I wonder if, you know, in the years to come, if anybody else is going to pick up this mantle and keep doing this, because things are getting harder and more challenging in our future. And I agree also with Tim with, you know, my 22, 23 years of speaking. In the last five years, I've done more work with men's conferences and men's parish events um, in the last five years than all the years before combined. There was something happening, definitely something happening. And I think it's because the line's being drawn more clearly. I think we're all kind of saying that. We're all seeing that from what Tim said about the administration. You know, in Father Casey's talks, you can't listen to Father Casey anywhere on radio or TV without hearing something about you know, things such as the rosary being a 50 caliber machine gun with 50 rounds in it, and <laughs> things like that, which I love, you know. Thus, uh, the camel oh, pants. Oh. Yeah, you, know, like um, you know, at the turn of the century, the Pope wrote, and not this last turn of the century, but the previous one, 1990, 1890 or 1891, Christians as citizens. Leo XIII said, Christian life is a warfare, right? And when we run from the enemy, we turn our backs, I'm paraphrasing what he said, we turn our backs and run from the enemy. We not only insult God, we embolden the wicked. And that was over a hundred years ago that he said that. He's also the, the Pope that wrote extensively on Freemasonry and really warned us of the things to come. And he's also the one that gave us St. Michael the Archangel Prayer. We are in battle. It is a war and it is for souls. And the alternative of not ending up in heaven is ending up in hell. And we do need to realize the seriousness of these consequences. And that's what drives me and has driven me for all these years is to get out and, and really bring this message because by the grace of God, you know, as you're all saying, and I feel the same thing, I felt like God years ago said, you're going to do this? I felt like it was a kick to the ribs, you know, it wasn't gentle. It was a blessed mother who hit me with the head of the two by four when I read about Fatima and found out that uh, she came and warned us in 1917, if you do not stop offending my son, there'll be a second war. We have World War II. Now, if you look at the you know recent gener recent decades here, you're going to find where several apparitions have been approved of the church were the devotion. Rwanda, for example, she showed them. They just recently we we remembered the 20th anniversary of the genocide. Okay, which she warned the children of 20 or 12 years before it happened. Right? She said, "This is what happens when man turns from God. Evil things happen. Bad things happen. We're seeing it in our time." So, as Tim said, it's our time to rise up and be saints. To raise up, to let God raise us up and be saints. To wake up and be saints to be heroes, to be fighters, to be warriors. And it starts with that heart. Where's the heart at? And I'll just close with this thought. You know, it, it, it's, 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 to me, it's one of my favorite parts of scriptures is when is in Matthew, Peter in the boat, and they see Jesus, and they think it's a ghost, and Peter, of course, with his you know, classy way of approaching things, no, it's the Lord. And you only imagine these, you, know, you can't get 12 guys in a boat together and have them all agree on anything, right? So you can only imagine what the conversation may have been like when Peter said that. You know, oh, here he goes again, you know, and... You know, he's shooting off his mouth again. And, and then he says to the Lord, he challenges Jesus. He says, if that is you, command me in humility, knowing that he has to be commanded to come to you. And what's Jesus say? One word. Come. Get out of the boat. Trust. Get on that water. And when he sinks, we don't know how long he was on the water, but when he sinks and our Lord grabs him, because he does the right thing, he cries out, Lord, save me. He grabs him. And the guys in the boat could have easily been saying, look, he did it. This is great. We can build on this. And that's kind of sometimes I think what we do as Christians, even in men conferences. You know, we, we say, you know, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. And I want to say, yeah, this is great. But guys, what does our Lord say to Peter when he's sinking? And he grabs me and says, why did you doubt me? You little faith. You know, let's go further, guys. I don't think Jesus wants us walking on water. I think he wants us running on it. Doing backflips on it, you know, spinning back kicks, you know, let's get into that battle on the water with that kind of faith and trust. You know, this is your third year, you're looking at 700 plus guys, next year, 1,700, the next year, 2,700. Why? Because as the line keeps getting laid down clear in our society, we need to be the men to stand up and respond and say, oh yeah, bring it. Because we got, we're packing a rosary, we're wearing a scapula, we got our holy water, we're hanging out with priests, we got all we need. And we're ready for the battle. So I'm I'm thrilled to be with you guys. Appreciate it. It's good to see some old friends too. So God bless you. Amen.